Our final guest today is one of the most esteemed theatre and television actresses the UK has ever produced. She's worked alongside acting luminaries such as Sir, Ellen McKell Sir Ian McKellen and Dame Judi Dench, to name just a few. Her latest role is a ruthlessly intimidating QC in the acclaimed courtroom drama series Silk. Intriguing. Oh. Please welcome Pat's his father. <laughs> We like her, we like her. Well, I've already. just been given Joe, Joe Calzaghe acting lessons. Her <laughs> 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 He's lovely, isn't he? He's absolutely lovely. Yeah. Did you smell him on the way out? He did. Yeah. Did he smell different on the way in? Uh, well, no. <laughs> Wafted in, wafted out. He smelled a fear when he left after walking past <laughs> him. So, so, so. The, you, you're Caroline Warwick QC. That's this right. This is your first appearance. In this is my, well, no, this is my second appearance so, in oh, this. Oh, this is the I, second episode. Uh, second yes. episode, yes. And it, the first series, which stars Maxine Peake, Rupert Penry Jones, who you just saw there in Neil Stook, um, is all about a young barrister who comes to London who actually is trying to get Silk, become a QC. She does, Rupert doesn't, so there's quite a lot of sort of animosity between them. And she then, finally, we start the second series, which I come as a new character, and I am a, an old hardened QC called, that my nickname is Lady Macbeth, <laughs> and, um, and the character develops as the series progresses um, in a way that I can't reveal too much, but, you but She's know. ruthless, ambitious... Does she change? She... Tough. We see a side to her that we're not aware of initially, in that she appears to be completely together. She knows exactly how to handle the position that she's in. Because remember, she's a woman of a certain age in a man's world. Mm. And she's, she says, she's very upfront, she says to Martha in the very first episode that we see them together, Look, some women in the in the bar think that I'm not sisterly because I am nice to you out of court, but in court I'm vicious. Mm. Yeah, so she's winning. got to, she has to win. That's, mm. People's lives are on the line. It's not just because of her own sort of narcissism. It's mm. actually she's, she's, you know, upholding the law. Do you think there's a moral element to this as well about barristers upholding the law and, you know, representing just anybody and... Well, I suppose, I mean, she is a prosecuting counsel and the, the story of Silk so far is that they are much more interested in defending people in Shoe Lane. Uh, that's why she's goading Rupert at that point and she's saying, if you walk into Silk, if you, if you prosecute, you can walk into Silk, so mm. come on my side. Right. Which, obviously, in, you know, is good it? and evil, but, you know, as sort yeah. of the baddies. We know what you're after there, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> but she tries to seduce Martha in the first episode. I know, episode. I saw it. I thought, you little minx. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, whatever floats your boat, I'm, I'm not judging. Anyway, um, <laughs> she's binary, I think. Does she... Uh, how, how much research did you do for this, though, Francis? Well, I actually went to the Old Bailey quite a lot. I went to the Royal Courts of Justice, and I was quite surprised, actually, in that... I read online that you weren't allowed to take your keys and your phone and this, that and the other, and it seemed rather sort of uh, strict. And I'd been to the gym, <laughs> <laughs> I'd got all my ge ge uh, gear with me, and I passed the Royal Courts of Justice, and I thought, well, I'm going to try and ask them what I can take and what I can't. And he recognised me from Doctor Who, <laughs> the security <laughs> oh, yeah. man. And he went, are you going to play a barrister? Oh, come in. You can go into any court you like, any problems, come back to me, I'll tell you. Mm. I said, but what about my gym gear? Take it in, turn your phone off, doesn't matter. And there you can. And yeah. it is quite extraordinary. You can go into all these different courtrooms. Uh, similarly, at the Old Bailey, it's our prerogative, our right as citizens of the country, which is m marvellous. And when you do see those lawyers in action, I mean, they are so eloquent and articulate. Mm. Well, they're they're actors, aren't they? Yeah. Well, yeah. she actually says in uh, Peter Moffat's brilliant, brilliant script, he, the lines he's given my character are so marvellous, in which she says, you know, I don't say that word, Lady Macbeth, in here, because we are actors and this mm. is a theatre. Mm. Did you mm. actually speak to any barristers or QCs? Did you, did you speak to them and, and ask them about their conscience? And, because you're making the point there to, to him that, mm. you know, sometimes you know these people are guilty, but you have to defend yes. them and you defend them. And I just, you know, I often wonder, how do they sleep at night? Did you speak to any other? Uh, yes, I did speak to a couple that I knew personally. And it is ultimately, and it's a job, and it is about the law. And, you know, they do present the facts to the jury. It isn't as if they're saying, I am now on this person's side. Mm -hmm. 
They present the facts and it is up to those 12 men and women mm -hmm. to make the decisions. So mm -hmm. that's what they would say. And they would say you, that it's, it's I'm just, all I'm doing, the day. Yep, yeah. all I'm doing is presenting you the, the facts, facts. And you make your own you minds you, you mentioned there about her being, you know, that she's had to kind of fight her way in all, a little bit in a man's world and that, and that she's older than the, the QCs coming up behind her. And we were talking earlier about this ageing yes. process. You know, is it a crime to get older, and particularly for women? Have you felt that in your industry as well? That Well, I did do an interview a couple of weeks ago. You might have seen. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the headlines. Oh, yeah. dearie me. Um, I, I foolishly made a joke in print, and you can't do that. We know anymore, you know. it. Had a man said uh, he was having an operation to put two inches on his appendage, I don't think it would have even got no. a footnote. No. But because I talked about saving up for a facelift, which was supposed to be a joke, but I was trying to make an important, I think, an important point in that we're now on that trajectory. Mm -hmm. Everyone has had something done mm -hmm. that works in television or mm -hmm. in film or whatever. Everyone's had their teeth fixed. Everyone's had a little bit of this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of lamenting the fact that we'll never get to see on screen nanas, what I call nanas faces, mm -hmm. yeah. like Betty Davis, like Jessica Tandy, um, Peggy Ashcroft. We're Those, shocked when we see it, aren't we it, now? It, we so rarely do. It's usually black and white movies that we can't... It's. And I was sort of lamenting that fact, but I was also trying to point out that I'm not a hypocrite, so mm -hmm. therefore I'm not going to say, but I won't also mm -hmm. be prone to actually um, yeah. succumbing under this well, kind of pressure anyway, and thinking yeah. about it. So yeah. I did say, so I'm saving mm. up for my face. There you are. Which That's cleared okay. up. <laughs> it started as a joke, it became a headline. <laughs> well, listen, we think you look terrific. A Silk tonight, BBC One, nine o'clock. Thank you very much, Francis. Thank Father. you very much.